So I'm going to start. I'm going to begin with general survey. I'm observing my patient's environment and my patient. I'm looking to see if I see any hazards. Uh, I don't see any spills on the floor, or any drawn cords. My patient appears to be calm and comfortable. His skin color looks normal for ethnicity. I don't see any sign of him using accessory muscles, like he's in any respiratory distress. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed as planned. Uh, knock, knock, knock. Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Wages. How are you today? Good, okay, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. My name is Kristen and I'm a Palm Beach Atlantic University nursing student and I'm here today to do a full head to toe assessment. So before I begin, I'll provide us some privacy and wash my hands. And then if you don't mind, just for your safety, if I could check your ID bracelet, please. Thank you so much. Can you tell me your full name? Sean Wages. And your date of birth? Uh, March 6, 2003. Thank you. And a couple more questions for you, Mr. Wages. Can you tell me where you are today? Uh, Palm Beach Atlantic University. That's correct. And what year is it? 2023. And what brings you in today? Just to check out. Okay. All right. I got the same information. So my patient is awake, alert, and oriented times four. I noticed that his speech is clear and his uh, affect is calm, which um, matches the situation as well. I don't see an allergy band on. Do you have any allergies I should be aware of? I do not. Know. Okay. And are you in any pain today? No. All right, great. If you did have any pain, then I would go through the OPQRST or Old Cart acronym. Um, and then last, Mr. Wages, before I begin the assessment, I'm gonna give you three words. They're for a short-term memory recall test. I'm gonna tell them to you now. The words are light. Light. Tight. Tight. Dynamite. Dynamite. Okay, light, tight, dynamite. Uh, later in the exam, I'll ask you to repeat those words back to me. Okay. All right, do you have any concerns before I begin? No. All right, very good. Then I'm gonna start with the hair, skin, and nails. Uh, do you mind if I touch your scalp? I do not mind. All right, so I'm gonna assess my patient's scalp. I'm feeling his scalp for any lumps or bumps. I'm looking at the distribution of his hair. His hair is uh, evenly distributed and thick. I don't see any alopecia. I don't see um, or feel any lumps or bumps. Moving down to the occiput, I don't see any nits or lice. This is also a bony prominence, so I'm checking for any early signs of skin breakdown, uh, like non-blanchable redness, which I do not see. I'm gonna continue with the bony prominences behind the ears, on the shoulders, the scapula, the elbows, the sacrum, and last would be the heels. And again, in none of those areas did I see any signs of non-blanchable redness. So now I'm gonna be feeling your skin for warmth and dryness. I'm gonna use the backs of my hands and I'm gonna start at the top of your head and work my way all the way down your extremities, to your fingertips, and then to your toes. Using the backs of my hands, and I feel like it's bilaterally warm and dry, which is a normal finding. I'm gonna check the capillary refill of the toes, which comes back within three seconds or less, which is a normal finding. And I also don't see any edema or swelling of the ankles or feet. If I did, I'd wanna to to check if that was pitting or not pitting. Next for your uh, fingernails here, I'm going to just push down on your nail bed and I'm looking on both hands to see that the cap refill comes back in two seconds or less, which it does. And then, <laughs> excuse me, and you take your two pointer fingers for me and put them together with the first knuckle and I'm looking for a small diamond window which is present. That's a negative finding for clubbing. Next is the skin turgor test, a slight squeeze on your forearm to check for hydration status and skin elasticity and that skin snaps right back uh, which is a negative finding for tenting. Do you have any moles that you'd like me to take a look at today? No. All right, excellent. If you did, I'd go through the ABCDEEFG acronym uh, to evaluate a mole for melanoma. Uh, but since we don't have that, we're going to move on. We're going to now go to the eyes, ears, nose, and throat portion of the exam. And we're going to start with the eyes, um, beginning with the inspection of the eyes. I see that his uh, sclera are white, his conjunctiva appear clear. Uh, he has the presence of eyebrows. Uh, they're evenly distributed. They're not sparse. I don't see any um, eczema. I see that he has the presence of eyelashes, no eyelid lag like ptosis, no signs of uh, exophthalmos. And I'm just gonna look at the base of your eyelids, please. Can you look up towards the ceiling? Okay, and I see that that area is a light pink. It's not jaundice, and I don't see any hemorrhaging. So we're gonna move on. Do you have any uh, current problems with your vision or any recent eye changes? No. And are you wearing contacts? No. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna begin by assessing cranial nerve number two, which is optic. I'm gonna hold up this card, it's called a smelling card. And if you'd cover one eye for me, I'm gonna ask you to read the lowest line that you can. Uh, four, two, six, seven, three, nine. Okay, and then switch eyes. If it's the same line, read it backwards. Uh, nine, three, seven, six, two, four. Good about I have this card memorized. Okay, um, all right, 20, 20 vision in the left and the right eye. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next part of uh, cranial nerve number two, which is peripheral vision. So again, if you'll cover one eye for me, and then um, 
Count up the number of fingers that I hold up between both hands, keeping your eye looking at me. Okay. Uh, four. Keep your eyes still. One, two. Good. Okay, and then switch eyes. Get your vision there. Four. Six. Very good. Okay, so cranial nerve number two is intact. Moving on to cranial nerves three, four, and six, which are oculomotor, trochlear, and abducens. We're going to start with the big H test. So now with both eyes at the same time, can you follow my finger as I draw an H? Making sure that I go all the way to each of the different cardinal fields of gaze. I see that his eyes are able to move. And sometimes if a patient has nystagmus, it can be exaggerated with this test. And I don't see any signs of nystagmus, which is an eye quiver. Excellent. All right, next I'm gonna be checking pupillary constriction. Um, I'm going to shine this light in your eye and then you can just continue to look forward. And I see that his pupil constricts. And then for consensual constriction, looking at the other eye constric uh, constricting when the light source comes to one eye. And same thing on the other side. Excellent, okay. And then while I was doing that, also looking at his pupil size, I would say that your pupil size is probably about three millimeters on both sides. For the corneal light reflex test, shining at the bridge of the nose, just look forward. I'm seeing where that light reflects in his eyes. It's about the same spot, so that's a negative finding for strabismus or a lazy eye. Follow my finger, Mr. Wages, right in towards your nose. All right, very good. Could you see my finger all the way to your nose? Okay, and I see that his eyes converge and his pupils constrict, so that means his eyes are perla, which is equal ground reactive to light and accommodation. The last test for the eyes is gonna be the red reflex. So um, you'll just again continue to look forward and I'm going to shine the light in your eye looking for a, a nice red sunset when I hit the pupil, which is present in the, that's your right eye, and your left eye. Very good, the red reflex is present, which is a negative finding for cataracts or uh, some sort of mass or growth. Next, we're gonna move on to the ears. Inspection of the ears, I see that the corner of the eye are about equal with the ears. I see that the uh, cartilage of the ears are pink. They don't appear to be red. I don't see any growths on the ears. Does this cause you any pain or tenderness? No. Very good. Have you had any recent changes in hearing or um, any complaints of any pain with your ears? No. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and look in your ears, Mr. Wages, if that's okay with you. I'm gonna pull up and back on your ear and then uh, visualize both the ear canal and the tympanic membrane. All right, very good. And I see that his ear canal is a fleshy color and his uh, ear canal or tympanic membrane is pearly gray and concave. Same thing on the left ear. All right, and then to finish up the ears, we're going to be doing the whisper test, which is for gross hearing. Okay, so could you just occlude one ear for me? Okay, I'm gonna give you a word. Um, potato. Okay, and then the other ear? Um, Spaghetti. Okay, so cranial nerve number eight is intact. Next, we're gonna to move to the nose. For the nose, starting again with inspection, always with inspection. I don't see any drainage coming out of your nose. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and look up your nose. Okay, so you're gonna feel my finger here on the bridge of your nose, look up looking uh, for any drainage, the uh, septum is midline, and his dog turbinates do not appear body. He would also test cranial nerve one, which is olfactory, uh, by having him identify a smell with his eyes closed one nostril at a time. We'll skip that and go to the sinuses. Any pain in the front of your face? No. Okay, so let me know if this causes you any pain here in the frontal sinus. No. And how about here, the maxillary? No. Okay, wonderful. So that's negative for uh, sinus tenderness. Next and last is the mouth. So for the mouth, I'm just going to inspect your mouth by having you stick out your mouth, uh, stick out your tongue, not your mouth, and say, ah, uh, tongue all the way out. Tongue should come out midline. Uh, looking for any obvious caries. Looking uh, that the soft palate and uvula rise symmetrically. I don't see any obvious abscesses, thrush, and both his lips and his gums appear to be pink and moist. Can you remember those three words that I taught you? Uh, light, tight, and dilate. Very good. So not only is the short memory intact, but also cranial nerves 9, 10, and 12, glossopharyngeal, uh, vagus, and hypoglossal are also intact. All right, so we're going to finish up the cranial nerves by going to cranial nerve number 5, which is trigeminal. Could you close your eyes for me, please? I'm going to take this little Q-tip you just saw, and I'm going to touch on your face and just point to where you feel that uh, Q-tip. doing it six times for the three different nerve roots that innervate the face. 
And then for the masseter test, I'm just gonna ask you to open, close, and bite down. Good, equal strength. Cranial, for, cranial nerve number five is intact. Cranial nerve number seven, can you smile for me? Frown, puff out your cheeks. Keep them puffed while I try to pop your bubble. Close your eyes, keep them closed against my resistance. And that's cranial nerve number seven is also intact facial. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead to the uh, lymph nodes. So for the lymph nodes, I'm gonna start by palpating at the preauricular lymph node. Uh, if at any point you feel any tenderness, please let me know, Mr. Wages. Any tenderness here at preauricular? No. How about postauricular? No. Occipital? Nope. Tonsillar? No. Submandibular? Nope. Can you push your tongue down? Submental? No. Superior cervical? Nope. Push your neck forward like, yeah, okay. Behind the supra, uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle, deep cervical, can't feel those. And then posterior cervical chain, any there? Nope. And then can you take a deep breath for me? Okay, supra cervical. Okay, I did not palpate any lymph nodes. If I did, I would wanna find out if they were tender, non-tender, mobile, or fixed. All right, last is the trachea and thyroid for this portion of the exam. So you're gonna look up towards the ceiling for me a little bit. I can see his trachea is there, it's midline, it's not deviated off to the left or to the right, which is a normal finding. And then to palpate for the thyroid, I'm going to just stabilize here on the side of your neck and can you look towards your left? Then with my other hand, I'm just gonna be palpating down the side of your neck, feeling for the thyroid. Okay, and then go ahead and switch sides. Same thing here, what I'm feeling for is any tenderness, any tenderness here? Nope. Okay, and that it's nice and soft and smooth, it's not nodular or firm. Similar uh, test on the back. I'm not gonna choke you. You're gonna feel my hands kind of come around your neck in that same location of the thyroid. And I'm gonna ask you to swallow when I say, when I say I'm ready. All right. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Wages. Excellent. Okay, so I, that thyroid, I could feel it rise and fall, but it's nice and smooth. Was it tender? No. Okay, so that's a negative finding. Okay, we're moving on to the respiratory portion of the exam. And we're gonna start by a uh, test called spinal tenderness, okay? So for spinal tenderness, I'm gonna be putting my hand on your uh, back and uh, wiggling down your spine, okay? I'm gonna begin now. And just again, as always, let me know if there's any pain at any point during this. Any pain? Nope. All the way down to the sacroiliac joint. Any pain here? Nope. All right, and then I'm finding the bottom of your ribs. Can you help me? Can you show me where the bottom of your ribs are? Okay, I'm gonna leave my hand there as a landmark. And then any pain or tenderness with those, um, like, uh, palpation? No. Okay, how about on this side? Nope. Okay, that test is called uh, CVA tenderness, and that's a negative finding for uh, kidney um, infection or kidney inflammation. Okay, so next we're gonna go on to respiratory. Uh, one thing I didn't say with the inspection piece was the inspection of the chest. So I'm noting that the chest size, the AP to lateral ratio is one to two. He's not barrel chested. And I'm going to start with auscultation. So Mr. Wages, I'm gonna um, move my stethoscope to 10 different places on your back. And you're gonna have to take a big deep breath in and out through your mouth each time. If you get tired or winded, just let me know. Yeah. Okay? So again, finding down to the base of the ribs. Is that the right spot? Yeah. Okay, up about two spaces to the 10th rib space. Can you take a big deep breath? Breathing all the way to the end of exhale. And again. Okay, and then just for the sake of time, I'm gonna demonstrate the sixth, the second, the fossa. And can you put your arms out like a T? And the mid axillary. And all lung sounds were clear to auscultation. So now we're going to do the palpation techniques. We're gonna start with chest expansion. Again, about the 10th rib space for the palms of my hands. You're gonna feel me squeeze. And then can you take a big deep breath? Excellent, okay, so my chest hands rose and fell symmetrically, which is uh, equal chest expansion, which is negative for pneumothorax. And then the next test is going to be tactile fremitus. On the same spots on your back, every time I move my hands, can you say nice and loud, 99? 99, 99, 99. 99. Like a T? 99. Good. And those vibrations work out equal in each place, which is a negative finding for consolidation. 
The last test on your back for respiratory is percussion. You don't have to do anything. I'm just gonna be tapping on your back and I'm listening for resonant sounds at the 10th rib space, the sixth rib space, the second, the fossa, and then again at the mid axillary, go ahead. And all sounds are resonant, which again is a negative finding for consolidation. Wrapping up respiratory, we're gonna listen for the right middle lobe on the anterior portion of your chest. So I'll need four more deep breaths for you. Don't need them. All right, I'm gonna start underneath the right clavicle, just demonstrating placement underneath the right clavicle. Okay, we would have him take a deep breath. Same thing in and out through his mouth. In a ladder formation, listening for clear breath sounds. Okay, Mr. Wages, we're making our way. Next part of the assessment is cardiac. I'm gonna keep with my stethoscope, only now you can relax and breathe normally. I'm gonna be listening to your heart sounds. Um, I'm gonna begin at the second intercostal space. So I'm gonna palpate for that first, um, excuse me, for the second intercostal space. So there's one, two, right up the sternal border, that would be the aortic. and then coming across the sternum to the second intercostal space, left sternal border for pulmonic. Down one space to the third intercostal space, left of the sternal border for herbs point. Down in between the fourth and fifth intercostal space, just off the sternal border for tricuspid. And then can you raise your left arm for me at the midclavicular line, fifth intercostal space for the mitral or bicuspid valve. This is also the apical pulse and the point of maximum impulse if I were to palpate and then after listening, I'm gonna flip over to my bell and go back up listening for duller sounds like murmurs at the mitral valve, put your arm down, tricuspid, herbs point, uh, pulmonic, and aortic. Okay, for my findings, I found S2 to be louder at the aortic and pulmonic and S1 to be louder at the tricuspid and bicuspid. I didn't hear any abnormal heart sounds, extra beats like S3s or S4s or any murmurs. Okay, so now I would ask you to lie down and I would repeat that exam because some heart sounds which aren't auscultated in one position may be heard in a different, but we're gonna skip that and go to uh, the auscultation of the arteries. So I'm gonna begin by uh, just listening to your carotid, making sure my stethoscope is on, and then, which it's not, and then auscultating for bruise, which is a whooshing sound. Then you point to the end of your sternum. Okay, just below that is the aorta. And then down into the left renal. Right renal, you point to your belly button. 45 degrees, iliac. Iliac, stating femoral. No breweries are auscultated, so it's safe to palpate your arteries. I'm gonna start by again the carotid, palpating the carotid. Um, one at a time on the carotid. Strong plus three. plus three. Okay, going to the radio, which I'll do at the same time to check for strength and symmetry. I'm gonna use your bracelets there. All right, stating femoral, stating popliteal, or I can demonstrate, can you bend one knee? And then I would um, encircle the back of the knee and feel for the popliteal one at a time. Coming down to the dorsalis pedis and the posterior tibialis. Posterior tibialis is here. I can actually feel those through your socks, plus two. And then dorsalis pedis is on the top of the foot, we'll say plus two. All right, now we're on to the abdominal part of the exam. He's already in the correct position. So for inspection, I see that the abdomen is flat. Uh, it doesn't appear to be distended. I don't see any uh, scars, striae, bruising. Um, do you have any complaints with your abdomen? Any no. pain? No. Okay, is this the normal shape of your abdomen? Yes. Very well. So we'll start with auscultation, uh, listening to the four quadrants. I would start in the right lower quadrant using the umbilicus. Can you point again as my divider, listening in the right lower, right upper, left upper, and left lower. Okay, bow sounds were active, which is a normal finding. So now we will do percussion in that same order, starting in the right lower, right upper, left upper, and left lower. And all sounds are tympanic, so now we'll go to palpation. Mr. Wages, for this part of the test, I'm checking for pain or tenderness. So if you have any pain or tenderness, let me know. A small swirling motion looking at my patient's face to see if they wince or grimace or show that they're in pain. Okay, and 
then this next one is for deeper palpation. Uh, left hand on bottom, since I'm a righty, right hand on top to pro uh, provide some pressure. And this might be a little uncomfortable, but not painful. That's feeling for masses. And again, each of the four quadrants. Okay, no masses were palpated. Finishing the abdomen, we're gonna feel for the liver and the spleen. For the liver, I'm gonna be finding the end of your rib cage. And can you take a big deep breath for me? Okay, release. Very good, I do not palpate the liver, negative for hepatomegaly. Feel me reach around. Same thing again on the other side for the spleen. Uh, you can relax a little bit and deep breath. Good, I don't feel the spleen, that's a negative finding for splenomegaly. All right, you look relaxed, but I'm gonna sit you up. <laughs> All right, you're gonna sit up now and we are at least on to page two of the uh, checkoff here. And we're gonna be doing musculoskeletal. So for musculoskeletal, first thing I'm gonna do is give you some areas where I'm gonna create resistance and just ask you to push against me, okay? I'm gonna start at your neck and work my way down to your uh, um, ankles. Okay, push forward, push back, look to your left, look to your right, okay? Can you shrug your shoulders? Cranial nerve number 11, spinal accessories intact. Can you flap your wings out like a bird? Back towards center, great. Okay, and then I'm gonna have you raise your arms up forward like you're a zombie. Okay, and then up towards the ceiling. Very good, bring them back down, and then all the way back to your side. All right, and then can you demonstrate you can pull them back like you're skiing? Very good, all right, and then for internal rotation and external rotation, first external, put your hands on the back of your head like you're relaxing at the beach, good, and then down, and then touch your right arm to your left scapula. Very good, and same thing on the opposite arm. Excellent. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead onto the elbows. So can you stick your hands out straight ahead and flip them over like you're carrying a tray? Excellent. All right, and now you're gonna just make a fist and pull your hands in like you're doing a curl at the gym. Great, push back out towards me. Excellent. Okay, and then for the wrist, flip back over and knock towards the floor, up towards the ceiling, outward away from center and inward. Squeeze my fingers, great. Okay, for the hips, uh, lift your knee towards the ceiling down towards the floor. Other side, same thing. Great. Okay, knees away from center, towards center. Okay, and then with the knees, we're gonna do one at a time. Can you bring your foot towards the ceiling, towards the bed? Okay, um, towards center, and towards the, um, no, no, away from center. <laughs> there we go. Same thing on this side. Down, in, and out. Okay, and then last is the feet. Can you point towards the ceiling? Okay, and then point towards the floor. Move your heels away from center. External, reversion, and then heels inward, inversion. All right, in all those areas, he had a, a full range of motion and strength of five out of five at each uh, joint. We're gonna now check your patella reflex. To distract you a little bit, I'm gonna ask you to put your hands together like this and look towards the wall over there. I'm gonna be feeling on the patella and then just below that for a soft little spongy area and then giving a tap. And he has a positive patella reflex. That one went not quite as good as the other. Very good. Okay, we're gonna finish up now with the neuro part of the exam. And the last part of the exam, the first part is a sensory exam. So there's four parts, parts you'll hear us refer to it as LPPV. I'm gonna just ask for one of your hands and you're gonna close your eyes and you can tell me where you feel my cotton swab touch ya. There you go, okay. And then next is going to be uh, pain. This is really just dull or sharp. I'll show you what I'm gonna use, okay? And then um, I'm gonna give you two sensations. This would be dull, that would be sharp. Okay, close your eyes. What's this? Dull. What's this? Dull. What's this? Sharp. Excellent. Next is going to be proprioception, awareness and space. All right, I'll give you an example. Flip your hand over and this is up and this is down. All right, close your eyes. What is this? Up. What is this? Down. What is this? Up. Excellent. And then last sensory exam is vibration. Again, you'll feel what may be vibration or just touch if you would let me know what you feel. Eyes closed. Vibration. Vibration. Dull. Okay, so his sensory was intact for light touch, pain, proprioception, and vibration, which is a normal finding. For tactile discrimination, if you'll give me two. Anyone? 
location. Okay. Point localization. Okay, so if you close your eyes, please. Again, I'm going to touch you with a cotton swab. Let me know where you feel it. Okay, uh, his uh, point localization discrimination uh, is intact. Extinction. Extinction. All right, close your eyes. I'm going to touch you in two points at once. Let me know where you feel the sources of touch. Right here. Right. Okay, his discrimination, extinction, um, discrimination is intact. And then uh, coordination. Multition. Okay, so Mr. Wages, I'm going to have you take your uh, left foot, bring it to your right knee, and then rub it down your shin towards the foot, and then do it again with the opposite leg. I'm looking that he has a smooth, coordinated movement down the shin, which he does, so his coordination is intact. Okay, we're, we're done, you're walking out of here. Stand on up, Mr. Wages. All right, can you walk um, towards that bed over there? And then don't leave quite yet, I'm gonna have you come back. I'm looking at his gait, I see that he has a um, steady gait, he's not uh, unbalanced, he has a good arm swing, he has good posture, he's not stumbling. Now you're gonna come back um, in a tandem walk, so that means heel to toe, keeping your eyes up, but you can put your arms out if you'd like, like you're on a tightrope. Sometimes if a patient has cerebellar dysfunction or they are ataxic, that can be um, greater or even more easily noticed when they're walking in a tandem walk, but he's well balanced. So now the last thing we're gonna do is the Romberg and pronator drift. For Romberg, you're going to just stand here, close your eyes, and I would watch his balance for 30 to 60 seconds, seeing that he can maintain his balance and then put your arms up like a zombie. You can open your eyes. Okay, you see where they are. I'm gonna have help close your eyes, push your arms down, bring them back to where they are. Wait, oh, you, I'm gonna push them down. You bring them back. Ready? Bring them back. Okay, very good, open your eyes. All right, you can sit down, Mr. Wages. All right, so with the pronator drift, he was able to come back without losing his balance and it was coordinated, so his motor exam is also intact. Mr. Wages, you have survived the full head to toe checkoff and that completes my exam, I think.